Yo, what up? It's Roger from the Masquerilla Podcast. We did it first. I'm back with another episode. Every other Thursday, I'm sticking to the schedule. Subscribe to youtube.com slash Masquerilla for interviews with your favorite emerging artists. And follow at Masquerilla on Twitter and Instagram, where I update everybody on my live Twitch show with SoundCloud, where I listen to your music. Today, we have Midwest live and direct well not live but it's live for me right now what's up man what's up (laughs) what's up um i noticed that you were just in la yeah no actually i was i'm going to la very soon oh oh yeah that's all where were you i was just out in arizona shooting a music video with the overcast guys that's where you were yeah it looks it basically looks the same like (laughs) Have, have, sun. have um you ever been to LA before? Yeah, I've been to LA a couple times. Um around three times I want to say, two times with my fa- actually four times, two times with my family and two times for a fashion camp I went to out there. Hmm. And I stayed at USC and so um we learned about fashion design, fashion development. Shout out Project Fashion Los Angeles, like that camp was so freaking cool. Wow. It was, it was super. How did you get involved in that? So I always have been like, I've always had an affinity for clothes. Like I've always been really interested in clothes ever since a kid. And it's just like one of my only things that like I can able, like I'm able to actively express myself well in like, um, and I can, and I like to say I have a distinct style, even though I really, I mean, I have a lot of things that a lot of people could wear, but at the same time, I think I pull it off into a point where it looks better on me than they could on them. No offense, like no braggadocious, like no braggadocious there. <laughs> like that's just the biggest. <laughs> it's like the biggest brag you can possibly say. Then you say, "No offense, I'm not bragging." Oh, let's do a fit check right now. Oh, what do we got? Oh, what do okay. we have on? Okay, so I have um, this one necklace from my friend over at Crash Vancouver named Ryan. Shout out to uh, him. I got this unreleased hoodie from my friend's brand called Mahor. Oof. I have a um, Supreme, the five burrow shirt. Um, got a got my cross ring from um, Chasing Worldwide. Then I got these shorts from um, my friend's brand. Oh my god, I forgot that one's name. Oh. But, um, but he's like a super cool videographer and filmographer. And then I have Uggs on because I'm not really going at the house. It's what? For, Sort of Uggs. Are we talking slippers? Are we talking, we're talking uh, ankle? We're talking, we're talking slippers. Ooh, you gotta, you gotta have the Ugg slippers. I'm saying. I'm saying. Also, Ugg, I just went to the Ugg store, cashed out. Their new collection, bro, they're fucking bringing up the heat. Bro, they bringing out, the, like, I, I want to go and get another pair of these just for how fucking comfortable they are. But so many people have been buying them to the point it's making it hard. <laughs> yeah, bro, they're like, they, they're like selling out. They got lines outside of the store. I swear to God, it's like a supreme drop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they just did some new collaboration, and they have like Evan Mock was in the campaign, and uh, White uh, Trash Tyler is that his name? Like he was in there, shot the photos. Uh, like all the cool Instagram fashion kids were in it, and yeah. like it was this crazy orange green like shoe uh sandal yeah. thing it was fire i copped because i'm a hype beast uh, um mr hype beast over yeah. here but, six box six box logos in the, yes. in the closet yes dude not <laughs> six but i have at least two bro i've never in all the years that i've like been into like not even street fashion brands but streetwear brands i've yet to cop a supreme box logo i did buy a fake one as a joke I bought um as a joke. No, I swear to God, I did. I bought it for my friend so I could be like, "Yo, dude, I got a box logo to make him mad because he can never get one when they drop." <laughs> and so I was like, <laughs> and I was like, so I tried to find the most rare one that was the most uh, like obviously fake in the world. And so I found the um Sopranos box logo, the yeah. one with the orange so gun. Yeah, so, so fucking hard. And so I got that because I knew that was his dream grail. Like he wanted that shirt for the longest. And so I found the most funky fake shirt i could ever think of with that on it and so i got it i was like dude look took a selfie and sent it to him he's like i hate you i was like i hope you know it's fake (laughs) (laughs) see i have a few hoodie box logos from more recent seasons but i like buy them if i'm lucky enough to get them at the drop 
Then, yeah. But I don't pay resale for like box logos. I don't line up at the store. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like. Like I line up like the times I have gone to the Supreme stores, I, I've gotten in line just to simply go inside and just because I because I live in Indiana. We don't have right, a lot right. of brands that like have that sort of like popularity into the extent that they do. And so when I'm ever in Los Angeles, I always try to stop by either like golf Supreme, mm -hmm. maybe even uh, menace Los Angeles or something mm, like that. Shout out menace. Bro. Menace is fucking crazy. I got their um Paisley denim jacket for the like, for, like, like two drops ago. And then I got the um like regular, like wash, but like vintage menace jeans with a little um insignia on them. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just copped to, um, they dropped some um, cargo shorts like a while back that had like fake dummy like bullet rounds on them. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. I don't know how I feel if I travel with them, but it's so hard. Stop the TSA. Yeah. They said, it's gonna be like, well, well, what, you, what, you, what, you, what you what you got there? Like, <laughs> hey there, buddy. <laughs> they go pull me to the side. Oh. Fucking shout out to Stephen at Menace. I got to have him on the podcast. I had on Parker from Absent. Yeah, uh, and they did the collab with Menace. Are you fucking with Absent? Absent is hard. I've always like, um, my Chicago friends put me on the Absent heavy, cause um, I started I fucked with Codon the um the yeah. drawer. Yeah, his art style was fucking nuts. Like it's it was crazy. And through Codon, I found about through I found out about Half Evil. Through Half mm -hmm. Evil, I found about Absent. Through Absent, I found about fucking Foul Play and then all these other brands that just stem from one another. And it was super sick. And I stumbled upon Absent when they dropped their um the original like rhinestone hoodies, the one that everybody yeah, was right. copying. I copped, like, yes. Yeah, I wish I got one, but now people are trying to upcharge the absolute shit out of them because they yeah. know that they're that they're starting to become rarer. And another brand I really like is Sukami. Like yes. it gives me like it's super like OG like 2000 like like 2000s old bape like Inigo vibes yes. even though that even and you can see it's obviously inspired by they it. are very like upfront about yeah they're inspired by bape it's not like yeah they're literally, they're literally they're not even trying to hide it's yeah. not like um it's not like they're taking credit for creating a whole new tea or something like that right. they literally just wear it like they wear it on their shoulder like they wear it on their chest like they be like yeah we are inspired by them but we make like stuff like like you can see a lot of branches starting to do that with all the bootleg shoes coming out mm -hmm. like bootlegs mm -hmm. like the um, the ones that use the Air Force One silhouettes, the ones that use the Jordan One silhouettes, but they look fucking crazy. Like they turn out so nuts. Um, first question: Do you have the Absent or Half Evil plug yet? I do not. No. I am gonna plug you in with Sam and Parker. I got you. Number two: Speaking of bootleg shoes, yeah. What's your favorite one so far? Ooh. Um. I'm a simple man. I, I I have a pair of the um Gavin Gilfs ones. They're purple. Which ones are those? So you know Gavin. Do you know Gavin Gilf? No, I don't. Okay, so basically, he's an he's a he's an illustrator and artist, and um, he literally draws or he has this character. He has this character of a cat, and the cat is like his logo. It's like his thing. Like, and so he dropped these Jordan ones that were purple and white and had a pink sole with the um dark purple um under like uh, mm -hmm. under so and I, I fell in love with them like I copped those and then um I wore those with um a lot of things even if it doesn't match I was like fuck it I'm, I'm just lazy today I'm just gonna throw these on because they they're just a comfortable shoe and I think but above those I think has to be like I, you can't go wrong with like babesters like I had the triple sure. white I had the triple white babesters like the um 25th anniversary I think I'm not sure but the um they're all white. Like niggas mistake them for Air Forces all the time. But mm -hmm. that's the thing that like I'm cool with it because at the same time it distinguishes the fact that I don't like to be and do all the same shit that a lot of people are to be on. Even if I do do it, I try to make it distinct in my own way because that's just how I've been. Like as a kid, I always never really wanted to. Like I, I used to like freshman and sophomore year, I conformed to literally any standard or anything that was in front of me. But junior and senior year, I started developing my own, like, personality, my own characteristic and finding out who I was as a person. And clothes really, really helped that, along with music, of course. But clothes really became a big, like, vital part in expressing myself in ways that, like, not even differentiated me from the crowd, but just made me 
under like made me feel more comfortable about myself and people walk out like bro i like your shoes i like this that or like x y and z like all those things really made my day especially with the kid that like like tried to fit like tried to fit in tried to be the funny kid tried to do all these things and like fall into peer pressure and then slowly grow my own individuality is something i really i'm really proud of and i think clothes is the easiest way when you're growing up that's yeah. the easiest thing you can change about yourself you don't need to buy expensive brands you can go mm -hmm. to the mall or you can go to the thrift store or you can draw on your shoes and yeah. that separates you from someone Literally. else who might that's have the same shoes did. but <laughs> yours are drawn and you write your yeah. favorite bands on them or check her up your converse or something yeah like i literally just got bored one day and i got a jean jacket i got a levi's jean jacket and i just drew on it like i drew a globe on fire because i don't know I was, I was an edgy kid i'm not gonna lie very edgy child like I, are you I, not edgy anymore no i'm gonna say i'm edgy anymore people might disagree with my song lyrics but i'm not very edgy <laughs> anymore because back then, I'm telling you, I was listening to every single X song in the history of X songs. Right, like, exactly. I was, man. <laughs> I, and from X, like, through X, I found out about the whole underground SoundCloud scene at the time in 2016. Like, that year and forward just made everything, like, all the type of music I listened to, my, whatever I put it on, like, got in my friend's car, or if I was going somewhere, I was in school, and put my, told my friend, hey, listen to this. They'd be like, what is this? Like, what the fuck? Like, what are you listening to? So 2016 SoundCloud rap was your first foot into underground music. Underground music, yeah, for sure. Because I definitely grew up listening to a lot more mainstream music. Like, I grew up listening to a lot of Kanye West around the house, a lot of Kanye, a lot of R&B, Soul, some Neo, some Mariah Carey. Got some um, mm. Alicia Keys in there, some Jay-Z too. But with all of those things, like... um. As soon as I got my first iPod, <laughs> my first iPod, I was a big gamer at the time. So you saw me looking up Minecraft parodies of songs and stuff. Like I had like, um, shoot, this is something like I found a diamond, bro. It was a fucking bot back then. Oh my god! And and Captain Sparkles Fallen Kingdom. Like I used to be a nerd, bro. Like I was always on my laptop always just trying to find something to do because that's just what i like that's just <laughs> that's just who i was as a kid because i have adhd so I, I get it's very hard for me to stay still and like very hard for me to stay focused sometimes mm -hmm. and so having the internet or having like my ipad my ipod or just music to listen to like really allowed me to just like just zone out and just have an experience instead of just moving around and looking like i'm tweaking off a percocet or something and <laughs> It's super cool because, like, I started out, like, when I got my iPad, that's when I started actually, like, looking into more music. Like, I started listening to, like, I never expected it, but I started listening to Rihanna, Nicki Minaj, B.O.B. Um, B.O.B., I haven't heard that name in so I long, swear to man. God, yeah. Jesus. Crazy. But um, <laughs> I listened to some B.O.B., then the guys who made, um, oh, my God. Just fly. Oh my God, who is that? Oh, oh, oh go, go, stop, no funny. Uh, that was my jam. It's gonna kill me. I gotta search Bro. the lyrics right now. <laughs> I, that was my fucking jam. I would listen to that day to day to day. Like ever since I got on the bus when I lived in Belgium, because that's when I actually had my iPod. Like my first, it was my first like electronic device besides my first phone, which was a Wait, flip so phone. hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> We just, we really hit the ground running here. And I yeah. appreciate it because a lot of the like, newer <laughs> artists I have on the podcast, you know, they're uncomfortable with the interview process, but you're oh, making no. it real easy. It's so Dude, easy just, that just we, haven't, some... <laughs> we haven't established some basic facts. So let's mm. take it back a little. Let's you're go. 17 years old. Yes, 17 years young. Are you soon in high school? 18. Okay, so I you're turning 18. I'm soon, no, no, I'm turning 18 in June, June 5th. If anybody wants to buy me a birthday gift, I'm just saying. I, I got I, you, bro. I got you. I'm gonna put it in I'm my calendar hold you to right that. now. I'm gonna yeah. hold you to that. I'm gonna hold you to that. That's a mental note right now. June fifth. Listen, like it might be like a mascarilla, you know, hoodie, but it will be something. Hey, it's the thought that counts. It I might be like a, it, could, it could be a message or a letter in the mail. It might be That's like a a Vivian Westwood necklace. I don't know. Mm. No, it's not going to be, bro. I don't yeah, know why I, know. I said that. <laughs> I don't know why. But so like, you're, oh, really? you're yeah, like, okay. oh, you got <laughs> it like that. I didn't you know. Say? Oh, you yeah. got, you're getting that money, money. Oh, okay. 
well, you know. Uh, so, okay, June 5th, I got it saved. I set the yeah. reminder to remind me a week before. Expect yeah. something. Um, right. So you're turning 18. You're a senior in high school. How's your senior year of high school been in COVID coronavirus times? Are you in to school? To be honest, um yeah i'm in school i still go to in-person school but we oh, have wow. all these we have co well you can opt to be online and a lot of schools in my in indiana are doing um hybrid so one week one one certain amount of people are online and then mm -hmm. next week the people that weren't online are online and then the people that were online were, are in person then they alternate each and every week but our school is like screw it, um, because we have a pretty we have a pretty <laughs> we have a pretty small student population, anyways. Like we have a really small school because I go to a college preparatory school. So like with that, it's really just a small amount of people there compared to a lot of the public schools and other like um private schools in Indiana. And so we have so we are able to have like if you needed to, we could have as many well not as many people, but like whatever the limit is for COVID for COVID right. numbers and stuff like that, we're able to be very, like, very flexible with that. And so um, I'm going in person. And so they have, we have to wear masks. Each desk is six feet apart. Like we have, um, if you want to eat lunch, like you have to sit six feet apart, like together and have a conversation. Wow, that's crazy. It might, and it might be weird. And it was really, really, really weird at first to have a mask on all day. But at the same time, that's just something I think everybody's gotten used to. Like, right. It's like the, it's just like, new normal yeah like, like it's just like um it's like grabbing your keys when you walk out the house like oh i forgot my mask gotta grab right. it and then are like <laughs> see like in high school if you're like a badass kid you go in the bathroom and you sneak cigarettes are kids in high school going in the bathroom and like taking their mask off and that's like their flex <laughs> are it's like yeah. their kids like hanging out under the stairwells in high school without their masks like or it's just like everyone's super chill and like they all everyone is super and chill and they obey the rules only time that i see a lot of kids taking their masks down is either when they're drinking in class or when they're yeah. eating like when they're eating food or something like that but beyond everything else their their mask is always up and with that, it's like everybody respects the fact that we all want to get back to being mm -hmm. able to ha have no masks. So we're trying our hardest to make sure that that's possible. And so like, even, even if it is like a minor, even if it is just us doing a minor part. Facts. And I got to imagine at this point, you'll probably have a graduation in the prom. It's oh, like yeah. we're like, no, we're, we're having like one. rounding the corner and the shit's almost over. Yeah. We're having, we're having a graduation. I forgot the date. But um oh you didn't send me an yeah. invite, bro. Dude, said, I, just <laughs> no, <laughs> I just found out. I just found out. Could you I imagine if I showed up to your graduation? Like, what is this I'd fucking like, weirdo what? doing? <laughs> like, like yo, looks familiar. Wait, wait a damn second. Like, oh, yo, okay. Man, he has like a, a Vivian Westwood case. Like, I, I need to call the police. This dude is stalking <laughs> me. Um, so you're graduating high school. Yes. Are you planning on college because yeah. your music? Oh, you are planning on college. Planning on college, unless something. Have like, you applied? Like, yeah, do you have I, a school I got that admitted. You're going to? I'm going to Belmont University in Nashville for yeah. um, audio engineering and production. The wow. That's my undergrad. So, congratulations! That's incredible. Thank you. And so, um, thing is, is that only re I'm going to college specifically for the fact so I can get my undergrad so just in case like even though this is a very very rare and slight chance but just in case my music career goes south like vocally wise I can still I can still have some sort of like attachment to music since it's been such a big part of my life and yeah. I also get an undergraduate degree because I promised my mom I'd get one so I can't really go back on that I just kind of I kind of just have to follow through with my promise because that's just how I roll like if I promise something half the time if I don't follow through with it that's just gonna sit with me at heart and it's gonna just sit there and be like it's just gonna eat you alive yeah literally like i try to fulfill every single promise i make and that's why i don't make that many promises <laughs> that's <laughs> funny so yeah. you're headed off to school you also mentioned you lived in belgium i did my research yeah. you moved around a lot as a kid because your dad yes. is in the military that okay that's what a lot of people think but it was actually my mom oh so my mom is in human resources and so she's been every time that we moved around was because she got a up she got a promotion at a job or another job offer and so every single time we've moved it was really to that because my dad was in the air force and was enlisted before i was born mm. and so um 
when I was born, he was already out of the service. He had already been, he had already been retired. Okay. And so my mom was moving around just due to the multiple job opportunities that kept coming her way. Cause every single time that she would start to settle down, like, yeah, we're going to stay here for a bit. Hey, here's a, there's a really good spot for you, especially with given your um, track record. Um, you should go here. And so next thing you know, that led us to go into Tennessee, Connecticut, um, so South Carolina. That's, that's actually my home. And, let me people 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 like get confused because I say Indiana is my home, but that's just because Indiana is one of the only places I've been able to live at and actually take in everything like and truly plant my roots here and like truly like actually get to know the environment and the place that I'm living in. Because as a kid moving around, it really only gave me opportunity like a year or like a couple months to really understand everything that was every, every like understand the place or the location I was living in before I moved off again, right. lost all contact with the friends that I made there and then restarted the process. And it was rough, but at the same time it was like, it made it really easy for me to have start like networking at a young age, not even like networking, but just being social at a young age, even though I'm very antisocial sometimes. Like I refuse, like if I am in a room and I have to like make the first like, mover i have to make like the first like um conversation with somebody unless i feel like it's natural and i'm laid back that day i would just i would just stare i'll just be like <laughs> you know that's like very interesting because i feel like in that scenario where you're moving around a lot as a kid and you're going to separate schools it can go either way you can become super antisocial and shy yeah. or you can be the opposite like i have to reintroduce myself every year like yeah. i gotta make new friends and it seems like you went in that direction yeah because yeah i gotta imagine helped you when you started making music right a lot yeah because since i was already so familiar with just having to have like forcing myself to go out of my comfort zone and talk to people and make the connections and stuff that i knew were going to benefit me in the future and just make more friends as a whole. Like beforehand, before any artist I work with or any people or any producer I work with, I want to start a friendship with them first. Like I want to get to know them as a person first before any of the, before I get sent any of their material or anything to hop on with them. Like I do that because I want to understand who they are, understand where they came from, their interests and all these things to make it more natural for us to work. Cause you can't really like, it's really hard to force your beats upon somebody. Like that's how, mm. that's why I constantly tell like up and coming producers and stuff like, Hey, do not DM me. Yo, here's a beat pack. Hey, yo, use my beats. That's not the way to go about it. <laughs> and I know that it might be hard to get your beats out there at first, but if you're hard, then people are going to naturally gravitate and levitate to your sound and that, and like find out, Oh shit, this nigga is hard. Like this nigga go crazy. Like I want to work with him. And then, Next thing you know, another producer that you might look up to or somebody that you already know starts working with them. They have a lab. A lab gets placed with somebody semi-big in the underground or big in the underground or even in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Then you get more attention than ever. And then after that, you're in demand. It's just really an, um, a matter of just how dedicated people want to be to it. Because it's easy to start and say, yeah, I make beats. But it's really hard to go places with that and make sure that you can stand out from anybody else and everybody else. Because there's a lot of producers, there's a lot of artists and rappers and, art, and like just musicians out there. You just have to understand, like you have to find that one wow factor or something that shows everybody that you're different from the crowd or that you don't lean into norms and trends or stuff. And even if you do, you do it with your own twist. You make it your own craft. You don't just make, exactly. you don't just do the things to just like, cash in on the on the on the money coming in or the or the trends at the time incredible advice so with all that being said let's take it back to when you were starting yeah. when did you start why did you start music and how let me open up my soundcloud because i want to say because <laughs> okay it's a funny story so um three years ago i released my first song on soundcloud called look at look at zach and it was a diss track <laughs> And I know that might sound corny and dumb as hell, but here's the context behind it. So at my school, very white school, um, it was, it was, <laughs> we, we had this ongoing beef in between these two. I'm not, actually, I'm not going to say their names, but there's these two kids in my school who are beefing. And so actually, I already said Zach's name. So I guess y'all can, I'm not going to say his last name for confidentiality yeah, yeah. to be respectful. But um, so Zach was beefing with another student. And so one day, they just straight up had a, they just straight up wrote some shit down and went outside like and had a crowd gather and they started having a rap battle like an oh old fashioned God. like 
Like you're a victim, rap battle. Like one of those <laughs> rap battles. Like yes, dude. Is like, there a video of this? <laughs> there was one. I have to find it, but bro, the it was fucking school board was like, we're erasing it, this from the internet. It had, it had to be the funniest thing I've ever seen. Cause one, cause Zach said, um, <laughs> one line and then everybody was messing with it so hard that they did the thing where they're like, Oh, yeah, shit, and then they yeah. all ran away. And then, <laughs> and so I wasn't messing with Zach at that point, but at the same time, I kind of just wanted to like chip in on it. Cause I felt like it'd be fun. So I downloaded the look at me instrumental by X and then I wrote, my own version of it and it and literally included um like just dissing Zach on like his nose or like his appearance <laughs> and stuff like that. That's a joke. And I right. constantly said that. But then the school found out. Yeah. Oh, no. So me and the school were on a like, <laughs> the school and me didn't see eye to eye on this one. So <laughs> oh, no. they called me to the office. They're like, yo, take it down. I was like, what do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. Like I was playing down. I was like, I, I what, what do you mean? They're like, take down, take down the song. I was like, what song? I don't make music. Like, I was just literally being so annoyed. <laughs> Yo, dude, I can hear that in your voice. <laughs> like, I can picture this perfectly. And so then afterwards, like, you don't take it down. We're going to give you an in-school suspension. I said, okay. Uh, I <laughs> like, yeah, up. it is me. Oh, oh yeah. No, Here yeah, for sure. No, that's the and name my right there. To my SoundCloud. Because my old name used to be Suspect with a dollar sign. And, man, man, looking back on that, that was a horrible name. But, <laughs> but, um... They're like, aren't you suspect with the dollar sign on SoundCloud? Oh my like, God, this is crazy. Who's asking? Like, huh. are you talking to me? Are you talking to like the wall? He's like, Edgar. Oh. I was like, yeah, that's God. me. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, he started to use his stern voice. I was like, mm, <laughs> yeah, mm, yeah, that's me. I folded so quick. <laughs> as soon as he threatened me with suspension, I said, oh, You're like, oh, no, nope, yep, nope, yeah, that song is happen. gone. Say no more. Not going to happen. So I was like, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. And so how'd you go I from to, that to went making to my serious SoundCloud, music? Went to my SoundCloud and deleted it, private it. Oh, private so it's, it's, it's literally move. still up there. But anyways. um, Wait, is it there right now? Public? No, it's not there uh, right now. It's not public. Right. I have it on private, but I didn't delete the. I didn't delete it because I know that this would this would be something. I would you might need on. to send me that private link after this. Oh my god, no! My voice sounds like if somebody was cleaning the floor. Uh, it's so squeaky. Squeaky. Oh sounds my like god. a sounds like a fucking rubber ducky. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay, so maybe I don't need to hear that. Yeah, no, no I don't. But think but anyway, <laughs> it's like it's interesting because a lot of uh the new soundcloud scene kids i talk to everyone is like i started nine months ago but yeah. you actually started three years ago as a joke so how did it turn into something serious so for a year i was like oh, okay what year would three years ago be i'm horrible at well we're in 2021 now so three yeah. years would be 2018 but i yeah. wonder if your brain is still thinking 2017 so, yeah, that's what I was about to say. I was about to say 2018. So, 2018, I was a joke rapper. That's, like, I, was, I wasn't taking anything serious. Like, I just wrote stuff to write it. Yeah. Like, I made a song called SpongeBob and Weave, and it was over a SpongeBob sample. Like, it was the funniest thing I could ever imagine. And so, because my old name, my old name before Suspect, don't, don't, don't flame me on this. I know people are already going to get on me in the comments, but... It's um. It was literally Lil Draco, aka Young Bullet Casey. <laughs> and oh my god! When I started bro. out making music, I didn't have a microphone. I used GarageBand and this microphone right here. Literally wow. this wow. On, on the beats microphone. And so, <laughs> looking back on it, I was down terrible, down atrocious, <laughs> down super extra down bad. Horrible. And now. It seems like you're sitting in front of. Is there a mic inside of this yes, little nice mic? There is. Thing? It's a, a very road, nice. It's a road NT1. So wow, very popular mic right now. Well, um, with Flex that, up. <laughs> big body. Um, but <laughs> with that, um, I started to like my parent because I wrote poetry before I even started rapping at all, mm. and so. Rapping came pretty easily to me. Simply, it's just, it's just literally a poem with rhythm and rhyming every last word or every sentence. And so, with that, I started like one of my teachers said, "You should actually take this serious. Like, I could actually see some potential in you." Shout out, Mr. Somerville. And so, he um he told me that, and I was like, "You know what? I yeah, you're right." And Miss Horton, Miss Horton's um one of my English teachers. She's one of the most intellectual and just most like 
one of my big role models. Wow. And so with that, um, she told me to pursue this in a non-comedic fashion and actually showcase my talent. I was like, yeah, you're right. And so then um, mid through 2018, I shifted entirely to making actual music. I got a blue snowball microphone. Classic. Classic. You can't go wrong. I think that I think that's anybody's really like if you that didn't was, start uh... with the, if you didn't start with the blue snowball, then I don't think you really are like a, a, a artist, a musician, a musician. You know. What yeah. I'm when I uh, interviewed YBN Namir, he made rubbing off the paint. Mm. On that microphone, and they say, "Lenamir, where well, you deal. been? And I've been passing the breed. Exactly, I've been running the <laughs> no ball. I've been running, running, running. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that video. Everybody was going crazy yeah, over that video. God. And, and like now, it has like 150 million plays. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like it's crazy. But um, so I started taking it to. I I didn't do the singing music until I think I want to say early 20, late 28, 28, like 2019. Cause that's when I started, um, cause that's when I started doing this, um, like actually developing a sound for myself. And it was like a year ago where I actually started to do, um, music seriously. Cause that's when the, um, cause I just like, I went to this show. There was a show in Austin, Texas with the Bloodhounds and the Bloodhounds is a collective in my scene, the, the ditchy core, hyper pop scene, whatever you want to call it. But Bloodhounds, it's made of, um, it was made up of like the people that popped out were Kuru, Chach, FNS, Idol, um, Mixed Matches was there, mm. um, um, Ugly Zuck, and a lot more other people were just there. And it was just a good time. Like we all went there, performed at the Austin Co op. And um, I was the opening set. And then after that, like uh, everything started to slowly fall in place shortly after that and I just started to actually be more come confident in my voice because I've been doing vocal things since elementary school like because my school because I've been at my school um from fourth grade all the way up to 12 now so been there for a while wow and so with that um they make you take vocal classes in the um in um, through elementary school up until middle school we have to choose between orchestra or band and so I took vocal class I, I was obviously took the vocal classes and then um I switched over to um band for sixth seventh and eighth grade all the way up until 10th grade in which I played trumpet for most of middle school until eighth grade where I transitioned over to the trumpet and the baritone and then my baritone became the main instrument. My trumpet became more of the secondary instrument. Mm. And I was first, I was like, I want to say like second chair with um, second chair and trumpet or first chair. I, it's, I'm not sure about trumpet, but I was first chair and baritone. I know that. Your boy could play me <laughs> baritone. And it was so funny because I was literally, um, freshman year, I was 4'11". So imagine the shortest, Imagine me right now with a oh, faux hawk, no holding acne, a baritone. holding a baritone at the at the height of four eleven. That's fine. The baritone was half of my size. It was literally up to like here. You gotta post a photo of that on and the gram like, ASAP. Literally, I I literally will just to show people the how much I've grown because I'm five nine right. I'm five nine and a half now. Like I literally and like, a half. You got it. Yeah. You know that's a very no. I important. swear to God, you can ask my doctor. You can ask anybody. They always say I have. Get your I'll doctor box, on the Zoom I'll right now. I'll box a nigga. I'll box a nigga. <laughs> over this. I'll beat a nigga. Break. So I will. Oh, because they be saying so. Oh, why you have to have? Why you have to have? And why? <laughs> why you worry about my height? You should be worried about a bag. Don't worry about what I'm. Don't doing. worry about what I'm doing. Literally, but. With I'll that. say this, <laughs> just to go completely off topic here, you were on my live show on Twitch, yeah. and I offhand mentioned that, yeah, every once in a while, I enjoy a bowl of Cocoa Puffs to start my day, and you yeah. fucking flamed me, bro. Dude, it's just... You're bugging. I'll, I'll give it to you. Actually, no. If you ate Reese's Puffs, I'd give it to you, because Reese's Puffs, Reese's, <laughs> Reese's Puffs, Puffs, eat them up. Eat it. Like, they got a catchy... <laughs> They got a catchy, like, intro and everything that gets you wanting to eat them. 
I don't I wouldn't even eat them, but it made me want to eat them. And they got the box with Lil Yachty right now. Yeah, I'm saying they 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 doing something right right now. And I guess they had the Travis Scott box. But Cocoa Puffs, bro, Cocoa Puffs are a no go for me, bro. I are tried them once and I hated them. That's I a hated no-go. them. They were butt. <laughs> I don't know how people put that in a system. That's like drinking coffee. Have you ever seen those videos of the guy from LA? And it's like I forget. He's like, if this hat is a no go in LA. You can't wear this hat. It's a ten out of ten press rate. <laughs> Have you seen those videos? I think I've seen like one. I've only seen one of them. But, I, but right, you got to make those, but for cereal. I need you to go to the supermarket and let me know what cereal I'm allowed to eat. I can literally tell you right now. Okay, that's a no go. I'll give you a list of valid cereals. <clears throat> Frosted Flakes, because you can't go wrong with the classics. Boom. Cocoa Krispies. Boom. Fruity Pebbles. Mm. Lucky yes. Charms. Fruit Loops. Goaded. Cinnamon Toast. Cinnamon, cinnamon Toast Crunch, depending on how soggy they get. Um, and then you got um, Apple Jacks. They, they, people sleep on Apple Jacks, bro. I swear to God, they do. And... That's really about. That's really it. Like that's really only the only things in the. So rotation. by my calculations, there's no chocolate cereals in that whole list. No, oh, I said I, I said cocoa krispies. Calm you, calm, oh, slow your roll. Krispies, slow your roll. We calm got down, the fruity brother. pebbles and we got the cocoa krispies. Bro, yeah, bro, just they go hand in hand. They just heaven. What are we saying? Milk, oat milk, almond milk. I what do we got here? I'm allergic to I'm allergic to almond milk, so I can't even drink that. You're <laughs> allergic to the nut milk. Yeah, just nut. Wait. That's going to be taken out of context. Ah, damn it. It's like, hold, hey, on. It? hold on. <laughs> hold on, everybody. Okay, so what <laughs> what were we talking about on that note? Oh, yeah. Um, Prior to cereal, we were talking about height. your music. So, like, a year ago is when this whole scene starts. I, like, it's, yeah, like, I, to like, an extent. I, want to call it hyper pop, but we don't call it hyper pop anymore. Right or, now, like, or, I'm not so lie. I've heard. Yeah, right. Like, I'm not going to. It's just the thing is, is that. Artists in this scene don't like having a label put on their music because they just create music. Like, they don't give a fuck what genre, what category, what anything it falls under. It's literally just music that we make that we think sounds good. I completely understand. I just went through this with SoundCloud rap about three yeah. years ago. I get it a thousand percent. But <laughs> how did you meet all these artists? Because you're like super. I'll, do that. I'll let you know. You no, know, like, so, friends with everyone now. Discord. Discord's the key. Discord is Discord is the blueprint. And so there was this Discord server for this collective called um Losers Club. And Losers Club was a collective that had Waze, 15 XX, um, Dolly, Dollywood One, Angelus, Crunchy, who also goes by Dalton, um, Sun Uzi, Z, and uh a lot uh, a, a couple more Azuzi and then a couple other people. And so they had a Discord server, and so I joined the Discord server because um, uh, I, I, I was bored, and then my friend Allo linked it to me. So the three people that got me into music as a whole were my friend named um, Cash Allo, or Allo, however you want to call him, um, Lars Yer, Ellens, and Fifth Way. Fifth Way's a guy from, a producer from Vietnam. Ellens is the guy that produced Trying. He's from the Bahamas. Larsie's, I, I'm, I forgot where Larsie's from. If so, if he's watching this, I apologize. <laughs> and then Alice from Philadelphia. And so we all met. <laughs> we all met. Well, I met Larsie and I met, um, I met Larsie and I met um, Allo through the um, car community on Roblox. Wow. Like I said, I was always a computer nerd. The damn internet's a marvelous place. It really is. So if I didn't meet Roblox those two, if to I didn't meet, if I didn't Discord, meet those two, it would be a click. SoundCloud. Like, were you all like, were you guys making similar sounding music at the time, or did you no. meet and then start to vibe? We so, Allo was making more distorted because this is back when I was doing my no auto tune shit. Like I was talking, like I didn't sing or anything at all. I was on some like. Very, very heavily inspired. X, Ski, Denzel Curry, all of those right. dark, dark sounds, like air sounds. I was heavily inspired by that. Like some cyber in there, like some, just a little bit, not a lot. But shout out to Cyber, man. Little shout legends. out Annie World, for real. Go. There's a photo of me and Cyber. Is there? From, from the UVC. 
Chicago show at the Subterranean. Wow. Shout out UVC. And that man, man and it's the most awkward photo because I look like I'm high as a kite when I was literally not. I look like I was high as a kite. And and then um <laughs> he's holding <laughs> and he's holding a Jimmy John sandwich. Oh my god, what? And, and, and so it's me like this, straight face, looking dead in the camera, no emotion on my face, and cyber over here just intimidating the cameraman. And that was my very first, no, that was my third, second live show. Cause I opened up for members only. Oh, wow. Weird. In my, in my, in my, um, in my city. Crazy. Mm-hmm. And then I, um, also did a, um, I did like a, this is thing called coast to coast, like, or something like that. I, it was like a paid show, but I was like, Hey, it seems like it'd be fun to just sort of get a, get a feeling for performing. Scam so show. I, and so I performed damn near, but then, but then I performed, um, I performed there, got like second place. Niggas ain't give me nothing. <laughs> I was, I was mad as hell. I went home like, y'all, that's cool. Had my, I was growing my hair out then. I had my, I didn't even have all this hair. I had, um, a flat top. I had a straight up box on my head. No hair grown out, no curls, no nothing, just a box. And you saw me walk up there in a pair of black forces cargo pants. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, a pink, a pink revenge hoodie. I forgot what which what, which one it was. Oh, uh, I think it might have been a Valentine's hoodie. I forgot which one with the um, with the black fishing vest that I still have to this day and I wear with all of my outfits. Yeah, I feel like the photo I posted on Twitter for like ask any questions like you might be wearing that, I think. Yeah, let me double check. Let me check my sources. I for sure saw it. It was like one of the photos, if not the one I posted. Yeah, it yeah, was I'm one wearing that one. Post. Yeah. yeah, I'm wearing that one. Yeah. So that's pretty crazy. You opened up for members only. Uh, shit's gotten serious over the past year. It's truly. Like, so what was the first song that you uploaded? And like, oh, wait, this is real. So, the first time I had a Eureka moment was definitely when I dropped, um, at first, I dropped this song called um, Blastoise, and then I dropped another song called Disrespect, and they did consistent numbers. They both went up, they both shot up to, like, 800 likes and stayed there. They didn't go above 1,000 until, like, a couple months later. Right. And with that, I was like, okay, so I'm st- I have a steady, I have a dedicated fan base. So I have people who listen to me. I have a group of people that listen to me. But then it was when I dropped um, this song called Trouble, which featured Taylor, which um, sampled Taylor Swift. It featured, it featured. Not featured, no. Taylor Swift. I mean, if she want to get on a remix, she can hit me up, get her on a oh, hook or something. You know fire, what I'm saying? bro. Gotta make but that happen. Damn near. Only thing is, though, I'd have to re-record it because um, I recorded in trial – because I, I didn't want to get a cracked version of FL Studio because I felt like I was too – like, that was illegal. And I didn't <laughs> – and I didn't want Everyone like, starts with a cracked version, And I bro. didn't want to go through that. So I literally – all, of like, my older song, like, FLPs, I have them saved, but I will not – but it's literally hard for me to load them up until I got the full FL. And I didn't save a lot of them. And so Trouble took off, and then I shot a video for it later on. And then after that – um. I dropped a song with David Shawty and Jack called Don't Stop and it's simple Kesha. And as soon as that dropped, man, that shit took off. Like I'm talking like a thousand likes and maybe even like the first two days. And that was something that was surreal to me because I never wow. reached a thousand likes under like on a song. And from there I started working with David heavy. Then we kind of just like plateau. Like I still talk to him. He still follows me. I still follow him and stuff like that. But it's like I like our, we just didn't work as much as we used to, and we both went on our own independent ways. Like I started to find my sound and stuff like that, and then I dropped another song called Two Faced with Proud Black One and Wells, and that was like the starting relationship between me and Wells. Shout out Wells. Shout the out architect. Wells. Shout out the the blueprint. The blueprint. Blueprint. Yeah, literally, literally. crazy. Love her, and so. Um, that was my first time I dropped a song, Proud Wells. And then from there, I knew, okay, shit, me and Wells are a dynamic duo, literally. Like, and so that, that started the blank face series, like the X series, like the three face, um, two face, three face, four face, those series, maybe five face. <laughs> I'm just saying, but um, 
Uh, so that really brought a lot of light to me as an artist. And so then the other big song that came afterwards was when I made Troops with Quinn mm -hmm. and Widow. Right. And that blew the absolute fuck up on TikTok. I gotta not, imagine that's the first song I heard from you. Yeah, because um, first Iguana Alana posted it. Shout out to her. Shout out to him, actually. The first, they've first they they've like started. It. They've yeah. really launched so many songs. Yeah, the first she made it. They they made added to it, and then from there I started going up and I started going for it. And then my people started following me. And then Quinn blows up, so it mm -hmm. gave her, so it gave put even more spotlight on that song specifically since it was with her, mm -hmm. and since we were both in Goon City, we had another song called Screaming that didn't it didn't blow up, but it was like one of the bigger songs in the Goon City page. And so that was how Widow on it because Widow did all I didn't do any of the stutters on that song, and people think I did that. Hmm. I literally did not. I sent the uh, I sent my bare vocals over to Widow, and Widow did all the chops that is like like the. I, I I be with my niggas with my he did all of that shit, and then the uh, and then I think following that the second most big song that I had was um game over with me and Dolly, and that one is like people call that the glitchcore song or like the one of the most like glitchy like stuttery all of this and the third songs besides pressure and stuff like that, and so. When that dropped, that put a lot of eyes on both me and Kara even more. And then that's when I actually started to gain my own fan base. Like, then from there, I dropped um, Three Faced. And um, before that, before Three Faced, I dropped Backseat with Alden. Mm. That's her. And because, man, Alden is such a great guy. Really not one of the nicest people I've ever met. Shout like, out to Alden. Ever, in talk, like, ever talked to. Shout out to Alden. Shout out to Nova Gang for the game over shit. Shout out to all my brothers in there. Like, I got to um, say, Glitter is still probably, like, my favorite song from yeah. this whole world. I swear. But I really like, um, what was it? You're so perfect to me. I fucking hate the new me. Mm. Da -da 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 -da. I think I that's, like, the, the second most streamed song on Spotify. I feel like yeah. that always comes on after Yeah. yeah. So good. But that but, song is super so if this whole scene happens, you're in high school, you're blowing up. Everything now, actually yeah. I did a one last thing. This year, nothing blew me up to the extent that trying did. Trying was the song that put me up on the map. Trying got me from seven thousand followers to ten thousand followers. And then from ten thousand followers to twelve thousand followers. Well, and with a little bit of help with, with Final Breath, which is the most recent song I dropped. But everything else, Trying did. Because that came out, then it got added to the Snapchat. Then it got added to Snapchat. And after it got added to Snapchat, everybody was using it, like, worldwide, stuff like that. I didn't even know. I couldn't even see after the stories it was being used on. But all my friends were telling me, yo, my local friend posted um, your song on, on their story. Or this <laughs> one instance. Um, Nicki Minaj used your sound, and there was somebody in Nicki Minaj's circle with the playing the sound, like zooming in on her or something along the lines of that. So, when you recorded that song, did you know that was going to be the one that kind of like put you over the top and like it broke you into a new threshold, or was it just like, oh, I like this song, I'm going to upload it? It was really, I like this song a lot, and I think that it's going to perform well just due to the uh, like in your faceness of it, like the abrasiveness of it. Because I like doing that a lot. I like throwing people off with my sounds. Like, I want people to go into my songs not knowing what to expect. <laughs> like, I want them to go into it and be like, be like okay, is this going to be, is this going to turn into an emotional song? Is it going to be a heavy bass, like, pluck hitting song? That's why I have so many beat switches and stuff in my song. Or a lot of things that throw a lot of people like not not throw people off but even bring them get them more interested and intrigued in what i do and super cool but i recorded that song like one go like not not like one like like just one vocal track but like only like i want to say three takes max for each line instead of we will usually i'll stutter and be like i'll, just, I'll lose <laughs> be like, walk a lot fuck walk walk along like literally like that's that's my recording process sometimes. 
and, but then there's the rare occasion that I go in and just have a song ID and execute it perfectly like 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 that. Like it's nothing. And that's how Three Faced went. I recorded that all in one take, in one moment, in one breath. Well, not one breath, but <laughs> breath. Now that would be something. That'd be crazy, yeah. One breath. Or just calling it one breath freestyle or something like that. So you have a project coming this yeah. month, right? Woo, yeah, twenty six. And so far you've only released one song from it. Yeah. Well, I released one of the new songs from it. Um Liar trying in final in final breath are the songs that are on there. So it's gonna be Okay. So it's gonna be four new songs. So seven so seven songs in total. So seven songs in total. And um with that, I I I do have I have two only I have only two features on there. And it's heaven and it's glaive. So I'm very excited for that record to finally see light, especially after <laughs> this song with Glaive. Yeah, the song with Glaive, especially having to just deal with Ash being <laughs> Ash. <laughs> just literally due to him just being one of the most like, okay, I got you. I'll do it tomorrow. Right. A week later. Oh, my bad. I got you. I'll do it tomorrow. And he's signed to a major label now, yeah. Uh, which I'm sure really. that throws his throws so a some little bit, yeah, a little bit more into time. the process of like, oh, well, we're doing X, Y, and Z. Can you release it here? And yeah, but at the same time, it's like it's really it makes me really happy to see that, like seeing um, Ash get signed and just seeing um, everybody in the scene just start to go up to the extent that they did, like seeing Alice Gas and Sebi on Anthony Fantano, mm-hmm. seeing Eric on Anthony Fantano. Seeing Eric get the fucking trippy red coat sign, like, it's every, so fucking crazy. Everybody was like, everybody gets stoked when these things happen because they know that it's gonna open up even more broad horizons for everybody else in the scene. I it's like, gonna open up in, like even more opportunities for every single person. Like, I like want to shout out more artists for signing, but I don't know what's public and what's not public. <laughs> uh, I know, I do too. <laughs> I was like about to say, yeah, shout out so and so. Yeah, shout um, out. Uh, I can't say. Yeah, that. That, 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 <laughs> uh, bleep. Um, shout out CM10. Obviously, I signed yeah. them. Uh, but oh, look at you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Shout Big out to Mass Records. Here. Yeah, exactly. Is uh, night. <laughs> Skinny Shook, shout out Freddie Gibbs. Uh, you're not signed, and that's not a lie. Uh, is yeah. that is that something you want in your future? Are you gonna stay I independent? Mean, you're gonna. I'm cool with being independent because I really like the idea of being able to drop whenever I want to drop, and being able to have an own control over my schedule and what I make. Even though I can still have that with a label, but it's just more of the fact that if the right label comes in with the right terms and the right amount of creative X, control. Y, and Z, yeah. and like creative control, and gives me enough. And gives me my masters. Yeah, I'm talking to all y'all labels. Um, but with that, like, I don't really care as long as I'm able to make my family, my friends, and above all, make myself proud with this music stuff. I don't care if I sign, if I have to reach, if that, if that's able to help me get to the place or the position I want to be at, or I don't care if I have to. Shit, I might if it comes to it. Like I don't want to, but if it did come to it, I would drop out of college. If I if if the hmm. opportunities became so large to the fact that like I wouldn't be able to balance everything, I would only drop out of college if it would be impossible for me to balance all the things that I would need to be able to balance. Cause I'm on the back end of my senior year, and things are already getting pretty busy. Like I've been, <laughs> I I I run track, I run track and field, I go to school, I make music. I have to, um, some days I have to do certain things for certain songs. You have songs to do this. You got to do, do press. Things. Shoot. No, I'm, I'm cool with press. I'll be talking to press. Like, <laughs> like we just kicking back on my couch, just chilling. Like, are you in your room right now? Or like, are you in like a computer room? I'm in my, um, my, I'm in my mom's office right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause it's um, all professional and such. My yeah, room is a little yeah, bit of a mess I'm right like, now. Trying to so, look in the background, like this doesn't look like it's his room. You can't uh, see. You can't see all me though, right? Right. Oh, right there, bring that up. Right bring there. that family photo up to the screen, uh, bro. You just put it on yourself, man. I'm telling you, man. Uh, when I told you I had a flat top. Oh, we uh, missed one piece of the fit check. I see. You're wearing an earring. Wow. Only child vibes? 
No, nah, no, nah, I'm not the only child. I got my beautiful sister right there, Cameron. Oh, there that she was is. at her. Okay. That was actually at her graduation. So, love her to death. Love my mom and my dad to death. They're one of the biggest supporters I have in music, and that's very rare to have both parents or even one parent supporting you for your for real? stuff that you want to do. And so, I'm always thankful for that. And I always want to say that I'm truly appreciative of just everybody that just listens, vibes, loves cries to my music or anything of the sort because it gives me hope that I can I can give other people an opportunity to understand that they're not alone in what they go through that it's okay to talk about the problems that they go through it's okay to be vulnerable it's okay to have those conversations that make you uncomfortable that's what makes you a better person and with all that like it's just I never expected my words to carry so much weight to some people and have my songs be something that people like like talk to me and tell me like yo your songs got me through some rough times and your songs saved my life. Like those, that's the reason I make, I make music. Like I could give two fucks or I could care less for the amount of money I get from music or the amount of publicity or the amount of fame I get from this stuff. I do it because it's something I love to do. And I love making other people understand that it's okay to be you because I never really, I was able to have that support from my parents, but I was never really able to push that into myself as much as I wanted to as a kid. And I want other people to understand and have that opportunity that I didn't have. Wow. You know what, man? That was so eloquent, so beautiful. I could talk to you all day long, but there's no (laughs) better place to end the interview. Incredible. Midwest, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It was very fun. I appreciate you. Let me rant about cereal and rant about <laughs> anytime all, the, all the smallest inconveniences in my life. I truly appreciate that. And really when fun. the world is back to normal, we will do this in person for oh, another episode. Say less. I'm down. Down for whatever. Actually, we, we will do a cereal taste test. Oh, I'm down. We will do the podcast, including a cereal taste test. I'm when down. the world is back to normal. Okay, I did have one last cereal take, and I know people are going to crucify <laughs> yes, me for go, this. Go quick, go. Crunch berries are not that good. Oh my God, bro. Why you come with the crazy takes? You're going to set the internet on fire with that. Okay. One. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I'll but give why? them credit. The but berries why? be smacking, but the actual crunch, like the crunch part of the cereal, that can go. That can go. Like I could, I could care less for that. You I'm here for the berries. Let I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you on that one. I'm That's saying. a billion dollar idea. Let's just yeah. get the berries into their own cereal. I think it's been done. It's just a matter of five. Oh, it. has it been done? I'm not sure. I'm definitely doing investigation. I'm definitely investigating. One of those investigate. like exotic snacks. So the shops probably has it. Yeah. If someone actually on Instagram just hit me up from one of those shops and like, yo, what's your address? We're going to send oh, you shit. a box of free shit. Yeah. Uh, so maybe actually that's a good idea. When the world is yeah. back to normal, we will go to one of those rare snack shops and we'll try all the cereals. Hell yeah. I'm down. Dude, well, I'll be a serial con- connoisseur. There we go. Again, Midwest, thank <laughs> you for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me, man. Hope you have a great night, day, whatever time zone you at. I don't know. I, I just, I just I'm just i in LA, thing. man. It's like five okay. o'clock for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're chilling. You're big chilling. Okay. Hope there you have a great go. rest of your day then.